OpenAI hits the 2 billion revenue milestone. One small problem is we don't have enough chips. We need more computers, more chips, and more AI infrastructure. So Sam Altman decides to raise some money to take on the project himself. The money he's asking for is not a lot. It's $7 trillion. Now, obviously, $7 trillion is a lot. That's like one-tenth of the world's GDP. Like everything we produce in a year, like $7 trillion is like a tenth of that. So he's in talks with investors, including the UAE, United Arab Emirates, the government, to raise funds for his wildly ambitious tech initiative. Now, currently, the entire global semiconductor industry's sales are $527 billion. That's for global annual sales. So Sam Altman's talking to the UAE, SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Sun, who's kind of notorious about going after these ambitious tech projects, and the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., or TSMC. If this is your first time hearing about TSMC, remember that company because it's uh, kind of important. Basically, here's who's producing those advanced chips for the world. There's TSMC and a fine sprinkling of everybody else. This is who makes all of them, almost all of them. Most of those chips are made in Taiwan, and most of the chips in Taiwan is made by TSMC. Now, you might be wondering, well, what about NVIDIA? Don't they have their own chips? What about Apple, AMD, etc.? Well, here are the top TSMC customers. Apple, AMD, Qualcomm, MediaTek, NVIDIA, etc. Most of NVIDIA's chips are made by TSMC. And it's all made here in Taiwan, a short boat ride from mainland China. China wants Taiwan, and it's not very subtle about it. Taiwan does not want to be taken over by China. And as a result of this, it developed a very interesting defense mechanism. It produces the best in the world chips for everybody, but doesn't produce their own. So they're everybody's factory and no one's competitor. The entire world relies on this little island for a lot of our tech and it's crucial for the continual development of AI. This little defense is even referred to as the Silicon Shield. The Silicon Shield is a theory that Taiwan's chip makers are a Silicon Shield that keeps the island safe from a Chinese military invasion. So that's TSMC. It's probably not as well known as, you know, NVIDIA and Apple, etc., but it's very important. It's a critical linchpin for companies like NVIDIA, Apple, Intel, and AMD. They rely on TSMC to fabricate systems on a chip CPUs and GPUs for various applications. So Altman wants to increase the global capacity for this semiconductor manufacturing. By the way, these factories, they refer to them as semiconductor foundries, as you'll notice in a minute. And so these GPUs, like the NVIDIA cards, for example, they're really good at parallel computation and matrix multiplication, which if you recall that from school, I think I still have PTSD from having to do matrix multiplications back in school. But it's very important for running AI models, for training them and running inference, aka getting the outputs that we need, for example, from ChatGPT, for training these models and for running these models, aka inference. And there's a massive shortage of these GPUs. And most of them are made on a very hotly contested piece of land. Now, the US passed the CHIPS Act, which would give massive tax breaks to people that try to build these semiconductor factories, these foundries elsewhere, like on US soil, for example. And while things are moving that direction, we're not seeing huge breakthroughs quite yet. Something like this will take massive amounts of capital and time to, to build and get right. But of course, the US is concerned about the UAE's involvement. The US government has actually shut down one of the deals that Sam Altman and members of those so sovereign wealth funds were putting together. They came in and axed that deal, forcing people to take their money back. So in other words, the White House, the U.S. government does want to improve our ability to manufacture chips, to have access to these chips, but they're very careful about whose hand is in the pot, who has access to these technologies. So the White House announces a $5 billion investment in R&D to advance U.S.-made semiconductor technologies. TSMC is already sinking $40 billion, one of the largest foreign investments in U.S. history, into a U.S. chip plant in Arizona. So that does kind of put that five trillion to seven trillion estimate that Sam Altman is looking for into perspective. Meanwhile, a lot of people talk about how expensive Nvidia got. Now, Nvidia has been doing extremely well in the markets. Nvidia is not worth as much as the whole Chinese stock market, which should have like a little asterisk on it because technically, you know, there's like a little fine print. Basically, it's a subsection of the entire market. The company's market cap has hit 1.7 trillion, the same as all Chinese companies listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange which isn't like the entire Chinese stock market, but I mean, still, this is big. And Jensen Huang is not slowing down anytime soon. In fact, he's out there drumming up more business. Where you might ask? Well, he wants all the sort of independent nations 
to use their massive pools of money to create their own sovereign AI. AI for that culture, that nation, that empire, however you want to see it. Take a listen. This is the beginning of a new industrial revolution, and this industrial revolution is about the production, not of energy, not of food, but the production of intelligence. And every country needs to own the production of their own intelligence, which is the reason why there's this idea called sovereign AI. You own your own data, nobody owns it. Your country owns the data, your cult, it, it, it codifies your culture, your society's intelligence, your common sense, your history. You own your own data. You therefore must take that data refine that data and own your own national intelligence. You can't, cannot allow that to be done by other people. And that is a real the realization. Now that we've democratized the computation of AI, the infrastructure of AI, the rest of it is really up to you to take initiative, activate your, uh, your uh, industry, uh, build the infrastructure as fast as you can so that the researchers, the companies, your governments can take advantage of this infrastructure to go and create your own AI. And as he told Satya Nadella at the Microsoft conference, he thinks that this whole AI chip boom is just getting started. The first wave is the first, the, the wave that we enjoyed, which is uh, incredible startups at OpenAI and others uh, who create, who are part of the generative AI startups, uh, cloud internet services, that's the first wave. We're now beginning the second wave, and is really triggered and kicked off by Copilot, Office uh, or Windows 365 Copilot, basically the enterprise generation. The third generation, the third wave, is the wave that, that I think is going to be um, the largest wave of all, and the reason for that is because the vast majority of the world's industries run on it, yeah. which is heavy industries. And this is where NVIDIA's Omniverse and generative AI is going to come together to help heavy industries digitalize and benefit from, from generative AI. So we're really, quite frankly, barely in the middle of the first wave, starting the second wave. And this is, yeah, this is going to be... Right. I love Meanwhile, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest has a few interesting thoughts. A couple of noteworthy things on here is one, with AI, our approach to AGI is accelerating faster than the forecasters anticipated. Originally forecasted for 2030, the rate of acceleration now looks like that forecast might be 2026. They believe that the disruptive nature of these technologies like AI, robotics, public blockchains, they like their public blockchains, and energy storage, sequencing like DNA sequencing and anything in that sort of field, that could grow to become 360 trillion equity market cap in 2030. And they mentioned a couple of things about how much will be spent on AI hardware and AI software to increase productivity for businesses. Notice again here that trillions are being kind of thrown around again. This chart shows a forecasting site's estimates for when artificial general intelligence will be available and demonstrated. And so in the chart, you can see just in 2020, we thought this capability was 80 years away. And with each subsequent advance in GPT-3 and what Google is demonstrating through DeepMind and GPT-4, suddenly it's like, oh gosh, this is closer. It goes from 80 to like, like roughly 30 years to 20 years. And now here we are today, and it's by the end of the decade. Before the end of the decade, 2027, 2028, you should have these wildly performant models that don't just impact, hey, I can chat with a chatbot and it's compelling, but also will improve the capabilities of humanoid robots. Also will make it more likely that we can identify the key molecules in any rare disease and target a drug right after them efficiently. Just to give you a sense of the drama here, even for us, and all we do is focus on disruptive innovation. In, I believe this was 20. 2020, our expectation for the market cap of artificial intelligence out there in five years from now was, I think, $40 billion. Now it's up to $400 billion. AI hardware 
spending, yes, is what you're the, saying. The, the spending on artificial intelligence, uh, hard, yeah. and I think it includes the software too. Am I right? No, this is so. If you look at the accelerators in the data right. center and what we were expecting to be spent on accelerators in the data center, we, you know, we previously approached it and said, okay, well, this is how much is spent on servers, and this is the share of servers that are going to be devoted to accelerators, and then the subset that's going to be spent on accelerators, uh, and we ended up with a $40 billion number. Now MD is saying that, hey, we think that there's going to be 400 billion by, right. I think it's 2027 spent on accelerators. And we have a, you know, we have an in excess of, I think $1.4 trillion on accelerators by 2030 is our official forecast or 1.3 perhaps. It's the same with software and how it improves me and all of our analysts as knowledge workers. People pay for software that improves worker productivity. Uh, and if you look across all knowledge workers, there's almost $30 trillion in knowledge work wages that is going to be paid in 2030. So if you can improve their productivity by multiples and just pay a fraction of that, you still end up with trillions of dollars, and in fact, more than $10 trillion in our estimation, of AI software spent to help knowledge workers. And therefore, you need a, a trillion billion dollars plus of AI chips to create that AI software. Now, I should mention here that Arc Innovation, they of course make money by people investing in their fund. So the more excited people get, the more money they make off of fees for managing the fund. With that said, they did start buying NVIDIA at 20 bucks and spent 12 million to turn it into 107 million, which is a 789% gain for their investors. She also started buying Tesla at $13 back in 2016 with a gain of 125%. Now, stock picking aside, I do really enjoy listening to the in-depth research that they do. But if we zoom out a little bit, she was buying here and now she's selling. Now, of course, not everybody is on board with just throwing more computer chips and more compute at these AIs to make them smarter and better. Now, a lot of AI researchers have talked about something called scaling laws, basically this idea that the more computing power and the more data you throw at the AI, the better it gets. So it's kind of scales along with it. So far, we haven't really found a ceiling to that. Some people pointed at the fact that we are running out of high quality human generated data since, you know, GPT-4 and Google's Gemini have basically read the entire internet and all the stored text and books that are available. And here they say, for now, though, we have to assume that Altman and his brainy colleagues know something that we don't about the scaling laws of LLMs. They can use their existing AI and recent technical breakthroughs like U-Star, a model that can reason about math problems and hasn't previously been trained to solve, to create the right synthetic, meaning non-human generated data, to train better models. Which I'm not sure why they're invoking Q star here when Orca 2 from Microsoft, a model that they've open sourced, was built on tailored, high quality synthetic data. And it attains performance levels similar or better than models that are five to 10 times larger. So Orca 2 is trained with an expanded, highly tailored synthetic data set. So GPT-4 creates the data by answering questions. That data is fed into this smaller model. That's what they mean by the training data is obtained from a more capable teacher model. So, I mean, here's the paper. You can read it yourself. We covered it on the channel in November, I believe. They even published some of the data that they've used to train these models, so you can try it out yourself. Now, Altman has been clear that his team simply isn't getting enough computing capacity from Microsoft. Now, we don't know what Sam Altman's chip company is going to be called. In the past, there was a code name Tigris. So just before Altman's brief ouster as CEO of OpenAI, he was going after the chip venture codenamed Tigris to eventually compete with NVIDIA traveling to the Middle East to raise money from investors. We've talked about this in the previous video on the subject. There's a San Francisco company called Rain Neuromorphics, which is basically a chip that is very different from what we have today. It's more resembling the human brain. It's less digital and more analog, and in theory should run much faster for AI specific tasks, for tasks where neural networks are used. So this is Rune, apparently an OpenAI insider, potentially an employee at OpenAI. Sam Altman even at, at some point said, also Rune is my alt. So his basically anonymous alternative account is Rune, which it's not. I think that this is its own person, but he's saying Azure, the endless stretch of digital ocean where Leviathans swim. Seemingly referring to Azure, Microsoft Cloud Services Azure that powers OpenAI's technology. Well, he recently changed his tune, now saying Tigris, the fount of all civilization. Tigris, the river flowing all waters to Eden. Could this mean that what 
we used to run on Azure Cloud is now maybe in the future being shifted over to Tigris, this code named uh, Chip Venture. But Sam Altman has been talking about that the world needs more AI infrastructure, fab capacity, energy, data centers, etc. More than people are currently planning to build, building massive scale AI infrastructure and a resilient supply chain is crucial to economic competitiveness. And he is saying that OpenAI will try to help. Now, people are skeptical. Does he really need the $7 trillion to do this? So you might be wondering, how much GPUs does $7 trillion buy? Well, you might be surprised that Sam Altman actually already answered that question. Somebody actually asked him on Twitter, how many GPUs can 7 trillion buy? Sam Altman responds, probably a lot of f***ing GPUs. I don't know why. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.